Hey, what's up? My name is PJ and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up, print and display your photos even in awkward sized frames. Hope you enjoy. So a small disclaimer before I start, this is my own experimentation. I've never uh, studied photography. I've never learned this stuff at school. It's just sort of what I've put together from um, trial and error and asking some other people as well. So um, let's get into it. First thing that I'll say is it's pretty important to have the frames before you order the prints because you need to know what size to make them, what size to order them. So these frames that you can see to the side here, I have collected from op shops uh, or thrift stores as you may know them. Um, so I chose the black ones because I already have some black frames and I wanted them to match the existing ones that I had. Um, these frames were probably between five and ten dollars um, and I personally look for ones with the mounting boards inside them already. It makes it a lot easier uh, when it comes to actually framing up your own prints and um, it means it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge like a poster basically because we're doing um, photographic prints, we're not just doing posters. Yeah, so they're a little bit um, scuffed and dirty and mismatched, but to be honest, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. Um, these are super, super cheap. I've saved a lot of money from buying these and having them framed up professionally. I don't mind if the um, mounting board's a bit yellow or you know the edges are scuffed or there's some scratches on the glass. These are just for my bedrooms, for my office. Um, so let's do it now. One thing that I learned recently through asking um, some friends some questions about printing and, and printing efficiently is uh, first of all it's a trial and error process um, if you want your photos to look exactly how they look on the screen it is a bit of trial and error you need to order some test prints you need to print at some different um, levels different sharpness different uh, amount of blacks in the photos and you need to find what <laughs> you need to find for each company and each printer what settings and what edits you need to do accordingly. So um, with that aside, I, I don't matter too much if they don't look exactly, it doesn't bother me too much if they don't look exactly how they look on the screen. Um, as, as long as they still look good, I'm happy. Um, but I decided to just take the plunge and order my first print um, without doing test prints before. This is kind of like my fingers crossed test print in itself. Um, I haven't done all my frames, but I've done these first three in this one print here. So I'll show you it now. This I ordered from RGB Digital, which I believe is based in Brisbane, but I could be wrong. Um, and the best thing is you can just order them online through the website and they are proper um, professional photographic prints as well. Okay, so here's what I've done. Basically, I've ordered a very large print um, with some advice given to me from a friend. I've ordered a very large print and instead of just ordering to the size that I need and then cropping the photo, resizing the photo to fit within that for the size of my frames. I have ordered a larger one and I'm now going to cut a cut the photos out basically and mount them into separate frames. So the reason that I do this is instead of ordering a one just big enough for this frame over here, which is this large one, I that would cost let's say $20 um, or I can order uh, so I can order $20 for this one. This one might be, you know, 12. This one might be eight on smaller prints. So instead of doing those three, I've done this one big one. It was about $25 Australian, I believe, at RGB Digital. They sent it to me within two days. I ordered it on Sunday and it's now Tuesday morning and um, it's arrived quickly. And it, it's all on the one. The sizes are all there perfectly and I've made the most use of the paper and my money as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the frames, leaving a bit of a border around each, and I'm going to stick it to the back of the mounting board. Now I have my three separate prints. So now I'm going to take this big one and cut open the tape around the edges. So like I said, I'm not necessarily doing this the right way, um, but it's been stapled in. So just with the corner of my ruler, I'm just gonna see if I can pull out the staples. This was a little bit of a fiddly process. This first frame came out pretty well with the ruler. Some of the other ones were sitting a little bit more flush. It's really easy to just stick a small screwdriver underneath and remove them with a pair of pliers. Time consuming, but honestly pretty easy to do. 
This was honestly the hardest part. I had to remove the mounting board, which was glued to the backing of the frame. Um, but if you do it carefully and slowly, I just did it with a ruler. Oh my goodness. So now what I'm gonna do is try and make this as flat as possible. I'm gonna tear up the, um, the chunks as best I can that have come off of the mounting board or just the bits that are still stuck to the double-sided sticky tape because I want it to lay flat as possible. Now I'm laying the mounting board over the print. First of all, just making sure that the print is perfectly sized for this frame. Um, secondly, I know this is not the correct way to do this. Normally you would do it over a glass table or a light box or something, but I just put a couple of bits of sticky tape, just enough to hold it in place for me to carefully flip it around and secure it better with some, some more tape on the other side. Um, so yeah, now it's laying nice and flat. Uh, sitting perfectly where it should inside the mounting board. I also put a couple of extra pieces just around the outside to secure the backing, the frame backing to the mounting board. So a couple of pieces that wouldn't um, have been seen inside the frame. There's some double-sided sticky tape in there and then just a couple of pieces around the edges. Um, pro tip, if you made a mess of your frame, if you got grubby finger marks, you can easily fix it with an eraser. So once you slide it into the frame, just make sure that there's nothing you've missed, no big bits of dust or hair, and then you can tape it down. I use cloth tape and a steel ruler just to fill in those corners, just to make sure it doesn't move, make it nice and secure. And it came out really well. This is what the print looks like. It's perfectly in the frame. Size is good. Here's a close-up of the tape on the back. Very, very happy with this. And the only other step now is to just clean up the frames a little bit with some spray and wipe. They were um, quite a bit dusty from sitting for a long time. Um, a couple of them also had a few bits of um, glue or other sticky residue. I think they had some price tags on them or um, whatever it was. Just clean up the frames, make them look nice and shiny and, and pretty for display on my bedroom walls. Overall, I'm so, so happy with them. If you look close up, they're not perfect, but um, they do the job just fine. And here is the final product. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you learned something, give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.